Okay, welcome to the uh, first main part of the, this tutorial um, series. Um, in this part, I'm going to explain the directory structure um, if you have here. I'm going to make the database, make the table, uh, and then um, code the upload.php file. And then in the next part, we're going to be looking at the file list.php file and the download.php file. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video and the next one. So let's get started. Um, these three files you should recognize from my introduction to this system. Uh, basically, uh, each one of these corresponds to a page. I'm not going to talk about that much here because I mentioned it in the introduction and demoed it. So if you haven't, if you don't know what what's going on, go back and watch that. Um, this core folder contains two folders itself. Uh, one is called Files and one is called Ink. Um, the files folder uh, is where all of the users files go that are uploaded and the ink folder contains some sort of library files um, that are included and used by all of the other PHP files. These ones sort of do some back-end type work and aren't really related or don't create a page um, themselves, if that makes any sense. It should all become self-explanatory later. In there we have one file which I will talk about later as well. Oops, sorry, gone too far back. Okay, um, on to the database. Um, I'm using PHP My Admin. Uh, if you haven't installed this already, you probably should do so. It's quite easy, you just have to download it from their website and uh, put it on your server or whatever. Uh, so I've created this empty database with no tables called Downloads. Uh, and now I'm going to create a f table, a new table. I'm going to call it Files and give it three fields. And just click Go. And OK, so this is where we set up the list of columns. The first column is the file ID, second one the file name, and the last one file expiry. Um, you obviously have to type those yourself. I have them because I've like, done this video about eight times now. I keep getting things wrong. Um, OK, the file ID uh, column is going to have type integer. Uh, the length I'm going to set to six, which is probably a little bit more than you'll need, but it doesn't really matter. and but yeah, I'm leaving it as 6. Uh, I'm going to set it to auto increment and primary index. Uh, if you don't know what this stuff means, go back and watch my MySQL insert query basics type stuff in the basics playlist. Um, I'll explain all of that there. The file name column, I'm going to set to a varchar and set the length to 255 characters. Again, same thing, uh, you're probably not going to have a file name that's that long, but it will not work if it, the file name you use is longer than this limit. So it is, it's not a huge issue that it's a bit longer. It doesn't cause any serious problems. So that's what I'm going with. Um, the file expiry time, I'm going to be saving a Linux timestamp in this field. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's the number of seconds since a date in the 1970s, which I can't remember. 1970 something. 1970, I think it is. And then I can't remember the date. Never, never mind. Completely irrelevant. Um, they're always ten digits long. Um, there won't be many. There won't be more than that for a huge number of years. Um, so yeah, that's that's how that works. Um, oh, quickly, if you don't know what Linux timestamp is, what it's for, um, it is basically just how Linux measures its time. If you have a Linux operating system like Ubuntu, which is what I'm using, I uh, know I say that wrong. Please don't point it out. Um, it displays the date um, in the taskbar or the menu bar at the top right of your screen. Um, that field is um, formatted from this number of seconds. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's getting slightly off track. I'm gonna have to stop doing that because uh, we're gonna run out of time. Okay. So database done. <laughs> Hit save. You can see the table has been created. Um, tells you the stuff we just typed in here. So now that's done, we are ready to go to the upload.php file, which is this file, and start coding. Okay, so one thing we're going to need to do in all of the files is connect to the database, which we do using the MySQL connect function, or the MySQL p connect function, which is for persistent connect. Um, but we're just going to go with connect for simplicity, the name sort of describes what it does more. Uh, P connect will be a little bit faster, but again, go back to my basics tutorials uh, and I'll explain the differences, blah blah blah. Um, so instead of having this um, 
function in all of these files separately. We're going to have it in this fourth file, init.inc.php. Um, this file will be included by these three files, um, these three pages, and it will do on any setup. Um, in this case, it is just going to be a start uh, opening the database connection, but usually it will be starting a session, turning on output buffering, sort of setting up any system-wide variables we might need, like user information or like validating the page they're on if it's a sort of dynamic pages type thingy. So now we're going to take this, just cut it, hit save, uh, go to the init file, just paste that there. Um, the MySQL connection, uh, MySQL connect function takes three parameters. Oops. The first one being the address of the server you're connecting to, which I've typed completely wrong. Um, the second one being the username you're using, and the fourth one being the password for that user, like so. Um, I've set up this example user and example pass for the purposes of these videos. Yours will almost certainly be different unless you've copied me, basically. Uh, so yeah, just type in your own information there. It's fairly obvious, quite self-explanatory. Um, next thing we need to do is tell the MySQL server which database we're going to be working with and we do that using the MySQL select DB function uh, it takes one parameter um, the name of the database um, which if you recall from the PHP my admin window was downloads like so okay so now that is completely done this file is saved and working so we go back to the upload.php file well, I say it's working we haven't actually tested it yet I assume it's working. Um, and now we need to include that file, which, if you recall, was in the core folder and then the ink folder, and then that is the file we're going to be including. So if we go back to our upload.php, uh, we're going to use the include function. It takes one parameter, um, the name of the file. Um, so it's core slash ink slash yeah, uh, init.ink.php. Um, sort of naming convention thing is this dot .inc um, completely unnecessary but I like to keep the pages separate from the sort of library backend type files just by doing that okay so now we've included the connection file the initialization file oh that's what init was short for by the way um, we can test this so if I just open up my browser wherever that's gone here uh, and just hit upload see we get no syntax errors which means that the file has been included successfully um, and the database connection has been made. Okay, so if now we have that all set up. The first thing we want to do with this file um, is check if the form has been submitted. And we're going to do that using the is set function. Is set. Um, this function. Okay, this function takes an, an unlimited numbers, number of parameters, and it will only return true um, if all of them have been given a value that is not null. Uh, basically it checks if a variable has been defined or an array key has been defined. Um, so yeah, we're going to use that here. Uh, we're going to use it on the post expiry variable like so and the files file nothing variable. <laughs> um, so this condition will only be satisfied if both of these have a value. Oops. Um, also, this file here comes from here, the name of the file input, and the expiry comes from the name of the thingy. Um, regular text input thingy, Check technical term for that. Anyway, um, getting a little bit short on time here, so I'm going to quickly do this. There's not much left to do, so hopefully you've kept up so far. Um, first thing inside this block we're going to do is define two variables, file name and expiry. Just line those up nicely. Um, the file name is going to be the files file oops, name and the expiry is going to be something we'll work out in a minute. Um, now just defining one variable as another variable I think it better go the wrong way around. Yeah, I did. Defining this as that is fairly pointless unless you do something to this. Um, in this case, we are going to be doing something. We're going to be using the MySQL real escape string function. If you don't know what this does, go back and watch my basics videos on it because I don't want to explain it here because we're already getting a bit short on time. Um, basically, it protects you against SQL injection by escaping any, um, placing a backslash before any meaningful characters in a MySQL query. So let's just real escape string. Oh, 
also it has an annoyingly long name. Um, yeah, so the expiry time, we're going to set this as the timestamp, the current timestamp, plus the number of seconds um, that we want the file to last for. If we get the current timestamp using the time function, and then we're going to add on the um, post expiry, the expiry time that the user enters, multiplied by 60. If you remember from the uh, introduction, um, we talked about the expiry box being a number of minutes, that's why the multiplied by 60 is there. Uh, we're also going to cast this to an int, or as an int, I'm not sure how you say that. What that will do is basically drop any non-numeric character uh, from that variable. So say if that variable had the value 24 text, no idea why I chose that, then casting it as an int would remove this text and just leave 24. Again, to prevent SQL injection, although the multiplied would do that anyway, but it's just sort of good practice, makes it a bit more clear, I don't know. Right, so once we have those variables defined, the next thing we want to do is the actual query, the insert query. So we do that, like, no, MySQL, MySQL query, using the MySQL query function. Uh, the, we're going to use an insert query here. Um, the syntax for that is insert into the table name, uh, which is files. Then there's a list of columns, file name, file expiry, if you remember from the PHP My Admin window, uh, they were the two columns we had, other than the auto-incrementing one. Like I said, remember MySQL will deal with that itself, we don't have to set it or anything. Um, then we use the values keyword, um, and then a list of values for those columns. So there should be two entries inside these brackets. The first one is a string, um, and that is the file, file name variable. The second one is an integer, no quotes around that and it's an expiry, it's not an expiry, it's the expiry variable. Uh, okay, so just quickly check, yeah, that looks good. So we should be ready to give this a quick test now. If I go to my page, just hit reload, no syntax errors, which is always a good sign. Um, I'm just going to set that as 12. I'm going to hit browse. Uh, I'm just going to, oh, that's the video I'm recording right now, if you're interested. Uh, I'm just going to select that, um, my wallpaper, hit upload, go back to the database, hit browse, and you see we have a new row in the database with the file name I selected, um, the time it'll expire, and this auto-incrementing ID. Um, okay, so that's that done. Um, one thing you might have noticed is that we haven't actually put the file in this folder yet. Um, so what we need to do is use the move uploaded file function. Move uploaded file function that to type. Oh dear, terrible. Sorry, it's very late. Um, this function takes two parameters, files, file, temp name, which is the temporary name, the current location of the file, the server stores it. The server basically stores this file as a randomly randomly named file in the temp folder um, until you decide what to do with it, which is what we're doing right now. And then this the second parameter is the location of the file, the location we want to save the file, including its name. So that from this script, if you remember, was core slash files. And then we're going to use the file name. Files, ooh, files, yeah, files, file, name. Um, we're not using this file name variable because we want the actual name, not the escape name, because that this was only for the SQL query. So, um, yeah, we're not using the um, file name variable that we defined here. Here. Okay, that all looks good. This should be the upload script finished. Uh, we should be ready for the final test. I'm just going to go to phpMyAdmin and delete this row so you know I'm not cheating. Uh, just hit refresh, resend the data, which will re-upload the file. Press request complete. Hit browse. You see now we have file ID two. Same inf similar information, I should say. If I go back to the files folder and just hit reload, you see we have the uh, actual file that's been moved to this folder. Uh, and if I just open it, you can see that's my wallpaper that I'm using at the moment. Um, I've only got 25 seconds left, so that's pretty much a wrap for this video. Um, thanks for watching, and I will hopefully you will join me in the next part where we're going to code the file list and the up, uh, download file script download script. Maybe. Might need to make a th third or fourth part for that. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye.